lot of times the stories are very affecting, and I mean, I think I just cry a lot. That's probably the uh, that's probably the uh, shortest answer. When uh, you know, when there's a story is very sad, and you know that person's crying, I will cry with them. You know, I will feel with them. So, you know, I think a lot of the power of the blog kind of comes from sitting in a moment with somebody and you know feeling what what they're feeling. Yeah. So do you find it hard to walk away in some situations? Some situations, yeah, very much so. And uh, especially when I travel, I carry a lot of cash on me. And I just, because uh, oh. I mean, it's just, I mean, I guess there's this rule in, in journalism that you're never supposed to insert yourself into the story or, or help somebody. But it's like, I'm not, you know, so many of the stories overseas are about how people can't feed their families or how, you know, people, their parents need a surgery and they can't, you know. And just so it's like whenever... Whenever I can help, um, you know, I do. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, if, I, if I don't have to walk away without helping, I won't. Um, but, yeah, you know, sometimes it is very difficult to walk away, especially when you know somebody's in a very bad circumstance. But how about your emotions, not, not the monetary side of things? Right. How does it affect you? You know, the, I think I've, I've been I'm pretty even-keeled um, uh-huh. towards it, especially now, because I've, I've heard, you know, so many of the different stories. When there's a series I'm doing with the Pediatric Cancer Series and the Refugee uh-huh. Series where it's very sad stories over and over and over again, it's very difficult. I always have a moment during those series where it's just kind of break down a little bit. But you know, um, you know, other than that, I think the I think a lot of times you get real compassion fatigue when you are hearing all these sad things and you don't feel like you're able to do anything about them. You know, I think the act of listening and the act of telling the person's story alone is a form of doing something. I think it adds value to them, and I I think it it helps to alleviate whatever they're going through. So I think that helps. I think the feeling that I am being able to do something kind of helps manage the emotions and kind of manage the feelings. So, yeah. What kinds of questions really help open people up? Um, so you know, normally the, the questions that I ask uh, in the beginning are me just kind of trying to find a story. Um, the, the questions that I normally lead with are what are your greatest struggle right now? Um, how has your life turned out differently than you expected it to? I like that one. Uh, but after that, I'm trying to get away from my planned questions as soon as possible, and I'm trying to kind of get into a conversation. The, the most interesting stories and the most interesting answers come when I'm not asking questions that I planned, but I'm, I'm leaning into the person, I'm listening very closely to their story, and I'm asking questions based on my curiosity of what they're saying. Do you find that there is a common denominator, let's just say in New York, is there, have you found a common denominator in these people, any particular common denominator? You know, I I try to avoid, um, I mean, the short answer is no, you know, I try to, it's, I think anytime you feel like there's a common, a commonality to all human experience, you're going to find an exception, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a various time, you know, so I, I try, you know, I think the, the main, the main theme and the main commonality that I found in the story storyteller that interests me the most is how willing people are, are to talk. You know what I mean? Beyond that, I try, because as a storyteller, my goal is to find what is what's different in every person. You know, I, if I was if I was sitting down at somebody and looking for what they shared with everybody else, that I, it'd be a very boring vlog. You know what I mean? So it's like really my what I focus on and my goal is to find out what it is about that person that's unlike the ten thousand other people that I've talked to. And so that's kind of the lens and that's kind of the frame that I approach everything. With. So do you consider yourself more a storyteller than a photographer? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, I stopped viewing myself as a photographer a long time ago. And the funny thing is, is so many people still view me as like, I can't tell, I can't tell you how many articles I've had, I've had to read about like my photography being this and that. It's like, man, it's like I stopped thinking of myself as a photographer so many years ago. And like so many people still do. Um, the photography to me isn't even that important. It's all about the story. You know, the photography, I will spend over an hour with somebody and the photography takes up 30 seconds of that time you know and the rest is just the story and that's that's what I focus on the most how do you choose the people um I try to keep it as random as possible um the process takes about an hour so if there's one thing that I'm probably looking for the most it's somebody who looks like they have time uh that's a lot of people sitting on benches I have a lot of cigarette smokers because cigarette smoking takes time uh I look for somebody who looks like they're in a moment of rest or a moment of relaxation because I know the process is going to take a long time yeah I was wondering how it
Um, you know, occasionally in, in very, you know, unique circumstances, a lot of times, like I said, um, when I, when I participate in somebody's story or raise money with them, you know, I keep track of them. I don't, I don't ever systematically or intentionally look for people to find out how stories, because again, I'm too busy, you know, meeting new people and kind of telling their stories. Um, how would your approach be different if you knew the person that you were um, yeah, it's difficult, you know, it's like the, it's the more time you spend with somebody, the, the more difficult it is to kind of have, the, to ask those questions, you know, there is something about the, there is something about, like, the barrier of, of stranger that both makes that person more comfortable talking and makes, and that makes me more comfortable asking the questions, so, um, you know, as far as, I mean, the answer is they shouldn't be different. You know, just because it's it's harder to do, the question shouldn't be different. You know, uh, I think that I, I just the, the main thing is just ask. Like, you get give the person permission at the beginning. Anything you don't want to answer, you don't have to answer. But after that, don't censor yourself. Don't censor yourself out of a respect for decorum or privacy. Ask. You know, give the person the agency to choose whether to answer, but then ask. Uh, there's no question that I will not ask because I think it's too personal or too private. Uh, and people almost always answer. I see that you're married. Okay. I, I see that you're married. Does your wife travel with you? She does occasionally. She's pregnant now. Um, I was traveling for two months. She joined me in Australia. Ah, uh, good news. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she tra normally travels with me a lot, um, but... You know, she kind of she kind of picks and chooses because this is exhausting. When I travel, it's exhausting. I was, uh, you know, I literally I circumnavigated the globe. I was in six different countries, and when I when I'm in these countries, I'm working so hard, like all the time. And then you're packing up. So yeah, I'm going home tonight for the first time in two months. So that's my birthday present, going home. And my apartment flooded, so it's not even really home. Uh, but home is where the dogs are, right? So. Uh, I'm going to get to cuddle with my dogs tonight, so I'm excited about that. How long does it take you to process one story? Uh, you mean, so... Like, you go out and you find the person the, from that Yeah, point. three hours. Three hours. For a long one. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's probably the longest, though. Um, anywhere between an hour and three hours. Uh, because, yeah, the, the writing process itself takes a long time, because... Uh, you know, I have to, the interview process can take over an hour a piece, and then it takes probably an hour to find the people, because for every people you see that I've stopped, um, and I've gotten this kind of intimate story out of, you're not seeing the four people who rejected me, and the two people who I interviewed but weren't quite comfortable with the process, so we didn't quite get to a quiet place. So for each, like, story that makes it on the blog, there's, you know, probably two or three hours of work that goes on to it, yeah. I work with high school and college students teaching about oral histories. What encouragement do you have for high school, for young people doing the same? Yeah, thing? well, I think, that, you know, and I, and I tell that, you know, I made a living, you know, there's so many journalists out there who are trying to find the perfect story that's going to make their career, and here I come out of nowhere and have a bigger audience than most newspapers just telling the stories of random people that I stop. So, you know, I think the key lesson is that there's fascinating stories that can hold and captivate the interest of millions of people all around you. Like, there's just no absence of fantastic, interesting stories in the world, and you just kind of have the faith. Like, I just walk up to every person with a faith that if I sit down with them and start and really focus on them for an hour, there's going to be a story in there that will captivate and fascinate millions of people, and I'm almost always rewarded for that faith. Yeah. Okay, one last question. Okay. I just want to... I just wanted to ask, what breed of dogs do you have, and what are their names? Uh, so we have a Chihuahua. We always have old dogs. My wife runs a senior dog rescue called Susie Senior Dog. So we always have old dogs. That's our common denominator. Right now, uh, we have a Chihuahua named Simon and a pit bull named Sarah. Uh, and Simon is scarier than Sarah. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah is scared of Simon. Yeah. So those are our dogs. Thank you. Yeah, thank Unless you someone so has a burning question, let's do pictures. Okay. okay. Uh, I do have. Uh, okay. What is just? You've done so many amazing stories. Right. What's been? Is has there been one that has been like really impactful? Yeah, no, they fall. I mean, the series have been, like, the refugee series and the pediatric cancer series, like, really stand out. But, um, yeah, I always I always get that, ask that question. I always try, but it, it's, it's hard to pick one story. Yeah. yeah.